Hi, I keep hearing it's not evil without victims. I wonder if anyone has any uh, counter arguments against that. It's not, it's, it's the term, the term evil is like a, a moral and cognitive uh, dead stop. Okay. The question is like, does this thing commit harm or cause harm or whatever? And what people will say is like, oh, I, I saw Lolly or whatever. And it's like, oh, was that her? Whatever, blah, blah. And it's like the, the, the act of someone doing that, of like looking at Lolly shit or whatever on any hentai site in the world, in and of itself, that like in a vacuum contained within a black hole or whatever, isn't the issue at hand. The issue is, the real issue is, are we normalizing the sexualization of features that we associate with children? And, you know, I think it does. And I think that's, I think that's pretty weird, you know, it's pre probably shouldn't do that, you know? So the, the term, the term evil, again, is one of those like moral, like, well, what is evil? You know, I, the real question, of course, for a utilitarian is like, where's the harm? Like, what is there utility? Is there not? Like, is there harm? Is there not? And in that case, you know, I, I have always thought that there is a lot of, uh, of that, of like over-sexualization of youth. I will say, however, and, and you know, and this not to be contrarian or whatever, but like, there are easy targets and there are difficult targets. And the easy target is going online and saying, CP is bad, Lollicon is bad. Like, wow, congratulations, you know, you've arrived at, you've, you've climbed up the first step of a staircase. Um, I think that, like, the next step would be, like, hey, it's really f weird how there are all these porn sites where they're like, um, hey, here's this barely legal teen, 18 dick sucking 18 you know or whatever and it's like hmm it really makes you wonder if the age of consent was 16 would these girls all not then be 16 would they not just run against the limit every time is the implication here not that like they would basically go as low as they could to the point where if there was no age of consent this would just be like cp like very clearly and i think the answer to that is yeah in a lot of cases yeah and I think a big part of that is just the fetishization of youthfulness, especially in women. And I think it's um, probably uh, probably not good, you know? And uh, a lot of it plays into the, like, red pill the wall stuff where they pretend that women stop being attractive at 25. Or you'll get people that'll do these really stupid, um, these really stupid, uh, like, um, like devil's, uh, wait, what's the term? Devil's, um, why am I thinking devil's horseshoe? That's not it. Devil's, um... Devil's advocate. Thank you. I, I kept thinking a bunch of yeah. Devil's advocate arguments. Well, we'll, we're, they'll basically be like like oh, so if you ever saw a single girl who's sixteen, you thought she was attractive. Does that mean you're a pedo? It's natural to find girls that look like that attractive, whatever. And like really dumb bullshit like that. And I will say, I will say this. I think maybe at least I hope. I think a lot of the people making arguments like that are themselves sixteen year old boys. And they feel insecure for liking 16-year-old girls because they're online and on the internet, everyone's ages are anonymized and irrelevant. And people are generally assumed to be adults on modern social media now that everything's blended together. So they'll see people, you know, uh, talk about how attractive adult women are. And they'll think like, well, there's nothing wrong with what I like. And they're being stupid, of course, but they're 16. So like, yeah, no shit, right? So I, I think a lot of that discourse comes from young people online but the whole like pornography 18 barely legal shit that is definitely not like that's like a real f issue that's pretty f weird why is this the conversation i join in on yeah i know it gets over discussed but like the over sexualization and fetishization of youth especially in women is like actually a huge f deal i think a lot of it has to do with um you know people say that is about power, not sex, and that's true. Um, the reasons for this are pretty complicated, and you can read psychological papers on it. But like, this is a pretty well accepted fact that the things that make a person rich, well, it doesn't make you, you know, the things that in the mental processes that are associated with a willingness to have a lot more to do with insecurity and power than they do purely with sexual attraction. Um, and I think in line with that. A lot of the um, creepy pedo shit has to do with male insecurity and a fear of women with the power and knowledge to make fun of them. I think that a, a lot of guys are basically are just really insecure about how they look or how they talk or how they f And the idea of a woman ever laughing at them for those things is like gut-wrenchingly, like life-endingly terrifying to them. I know that sounds really dumb, but like, I mean it. Like, think... A lot of European dudes used to f 
do pistol duels over minor insults. Okay, the human brain is capable of like this is this is socialization for you. You know, people will construct an incredible amount of personal investment in s pretty superficial shit. Like you know, you get like people do this today. Like like there will be guys at a club and uh, one dude will shoulder check another guy accidentally, but then not apologize because he, you know, wants to come across like cool. And then 30 seconds pass and one of those two men is dead, like head slammed against the corner of a table dead, you know? Like, what the f***? Your life's over, buddy. Both of yours. You know, one of you in jail and one of you in the grave. Was that worth it? And like, you know, humans are retarded is the thing. Uh, that's the main, that's the, the takeaway here. But anyway, I think a lot of guys basically are like, wow, you know, with, what with feminism ruining women and women are so like uppity and women will like laugh at you and women are, and, and a lot of this plays in with race too, where they'll think like, you know, they think, cause they see all this interracial cuckold porn. I'm being serious when I say this, this is like a big part of like male sexuality on the internet seems to be like reconciling your identity in the context of this dynamic where there's the hypersexualization of black men and their masculinity where men like black men get treated as like dumb animals but also as very virile so women fall for their how many comics did you guys see online that were basically just wow women don't like me a nice white guy but they will get by this black thug how, how many so many in my life like i've seen variants of this i've seen them in obviously nazi ways i've seen these in ways that came across as a little bit more i guess i wouldn't say innocuous but like less vitriolically racist you know that like there's so many of them it's such a common thing you know and a lot of these guys you know fetishize that dynamic which is racist but you know a lot of people have racist kinks i guess if you can find a way to reconcile that and act them out in a way that doesn't hurt people i don't think that's necessarily wrong you know like if you're into like racist race play or whatever and you find a black girlfriend who wants to be called the n-word while she's whatever your adults go whatever like critically analyze your kinks so that you're not like reflecting that shit into other people but we, you only live once if you get rock hard thinking of doing that and she's really into that like who 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 am i to stand between you two as long as you're both you know consenting whatever um so you know there's that but a lot of them obviously do not deal with the shit in a healthy way so they internalize this massive insecurity and then i think that the way this leads for a lot of them is like the only way they think that they can find a girl who's not poisoned by this like potential for cuckoldry or for criticizing is essentially like to be a pedophile. They'll think like, oh well, you know, a fourteen-year-old girl wouldn't um wouldn't do this, and that's why there's such a huge overlap between Nazis and pedophiles because Nazis already have an entire ideology built out of sexual insecurity and like overemphasized, fetishized racial dynamics. So for them to take all of that and like the naturally, you know, you have all those thoughts in your head and then it's like, ah, well, what is the ultimate barefoot trad wife or whatever? Anyway, I guess what I'm saying like to sum all this up is that all Nazis are pedophiles. What do we do about it though? Um, do less Nazism and pedophilia. Reduce both of these variables.